let's see a proper way to save data with a JSON utility class. Alright, we found us back in Unity once more, and in this tutorial, we're going to be looking at the JSON utility class and how you can save data to a JSON file basically using that. And for this, we will once again use the card display over here that I've already prepared. A link for this as a Unity package is linked in the description below, both with all of the code that we're going to write in this tutorial and without the code, so you can do either or. Let me just duplicate this over here because this is going to be 9, and instead of the player prep cards, this is going to be the JSON utility cards there we go and let's go so in our save data over here instead of using the save data for the player prefs that we've used the last time we're going to make a new class and that's going to be the json utility let's just create that c sharp class so we're just going to call this the save data json let me just add the class here to the save data and then let's take a look at how we can create this so in this case, we have this player data class over here that we basically wanted to save. Now, the cool thing about the JSON utility class is that you can just pass in an object. And as long as it has public fields, those fields are going to get populated and basically generated into a JSON file. Really freaking useful. What we can do here is we're going to make a private player data. So this is just going to be our player data right here. This is going to be equal to player data dot instance, because that's just the way that I set it up basically so that we populate this with, with some basic data over here. And then we're going to need two methods. The first one is a public void save data method, which is, of course, going to save the data. And then a public void load data. You can see it actually even suggests this to us. Absolutely awesome. And let's start with the saving of the data. So the idea is that we're going to get a string, and that's going to be our JSON string. And funnily enough, it actually suggests what we need to do. Exactly this. We want to call the JSON utility class, call the to JSON method. You can see that if I hover over this, it generates a JSON representation of the public fields of an object. And because our player data has all of the fields that we want to save public, we can basically just pass it into this and there we go. What we can do here for the sake of argument is just output it. Before we write it into some data, let's just do that. And then the question is, how do we write it to a particular file? Well, we're going to do the following. We're going to say using and inside of this using, we're going to use a stream writer here in this case. I'm going to call this the writer. This is going to be equal to a new stream writer. Now, this is not quite right because here we're just passing in the JSON. That's actually not quite right because what we want to do is we want to make sure that this is saved inside of the actual project path. And that is going to be done with by using application.datapath. And then we're going to do path.alt directory separator character. And then the name of this file, we're going to just going to call this save data.json. There we go. And now inside of this using, you can see it actually suggests this to us. Although what I want to do is I just wanted to use the write instead of the write line and then just writing in the JSON string right here. And that's going to do, well, exactly what we needed to do and namely make a JSON file of this. So we can actually take a look at this already. Let's switch back to Unity over here. We want to make sure in the panel right here for both the save and the load button that we actually connect the save data over here with the save data save data method and then the load one with the load data method even though that doesn't do anything just yet that's the load data method just making sure that this is set up in the package with the code this is of course already done and now let's start the game and what we can see is if we now save the data you can see we're saving this data and under the assets right here we are even got the save data and you can see we saved the hp the mp the xp and the card index and the same thing, of course, works if I change a card over here and I'm going to say 452, 152 and like 86 something. I'm going to save this and then you can see it change it here. You might get this warning right here. This is because this has not reloaded. So even if I click on this again, you can see this is not done. If I right click and refresh this. You can see now it has been done. Sometimes it might not update inside of the project. So do keep that in mind. But in theory, if you don't have to select it and you were to change something in theory, if you then go onto it, you don't get the error, but you still have to refresh this for this to change. However, loading it should actually work regardless of refreshing your project. So let's take a look at that as well. So for loading the data, of course, we once again have a string JSON over here, which is just going to be an empty string for the time being. And then we're going to read this in. So we're once again going to use the using over here, but this time a stream reader in this case. This is going to be the reader and this is equal to a new stream reader passing in application.datapath path.alt directory separator plus save data.json, making sure that whatever string we're passing into the stream reader is the, the same string that we pass in right here. Otherwise, of course, it's not going to work. And then JSON is equal to the reader.read to end. This is exactly right. And then here we make a new player data. So there's going to be player data, old data, and that's going to be equal to JSON utility.json from json 
And you can see it suggests this to us of type player data passing in the JSON. And then here, this is extremely important. While we've created this right here, we still have to then call player data dot set player data. The reason why I'm using this is because this actually prompts the UI to change as well. If I were to just do player data equals data, then the UI wouldn't change. So keep that in mind. So you want to do set player data and then just basically doing all of them manually over here. MP, we then want data dot XP. And lastly, data dot hard index, basically setting up the player data here with the new information. And now going back to Unity, we can basically immediately just load the data. So if we click load data, you can see it loads the data. Absolutely no issues. And once again, we can change them out here. So let's say 19 and then this is going to be 55, 15 and maybe like 87. And we can save this again, going out of the game, going back into it, loading it again. There we go. It all works. Now, there might be still some drawbacks to the JSON utility, namely, of course, that, well, it's just a JSON file. So in theory, you could go in there, right? So a malicious actor could just double click this, open it in any kind of program and then say, well, actually, I want the card index to be five and I want XP to be, you know, a very, very big number and HP to be like one. Save this. And all of a sudden, if I were to reload this, right, it's changed over here, loading, bam, all of a sudden, the data has been sort of corrupted or has changed. Now, while this could be considered an issue, it depends on really what game you're going for, right? I mean, any online game is going to have the data saved on the server anyway, so it's, it wouldn't be accessible by players. And also, there should probably be a little bit more of a sophisticated way of saving this. RimWorld, for example, saved their data with XML. I don't know if this is still currently the case. However, that is how they did basically save everything. Like, the entire file has just been saved with XML. It it is a similar format to JSON, a little bit more cluttered, basically, but the idea remains the same. And that's also totally fine. In theory, you could also create some sort of checksum with your data. So maybe that it saves like the hash of the actual file, right? So the contents of the file are hashed and then that is saved in the file as well. You could do something like that. And then basically it checks against that. And if something has been altered, then it basically says, hey, this is no longer a valid file. You could do something like that as well to double check, although it shouldn't make too much sense to worrying about that as of this moment. But as always, of course, all of the assets are linked in the description below. And if you've ever wondered how to do some smooth camera follow in 2D, take a look at this video right here. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.